but in the fossil record, we find some extinct people groups, it seems, like Neanderthals or Erectus. So how do we reconcile Neanderthals, let's say, the, the questioner with the Bible? Oh, there's no question. Neanderthal is simply Homo sapien. Mm. Uh, they've always been classified as Homo sapien since they were first found in the 1850s in Germany. But we now know that Neanderthals range from the Atlantic, uh, France, Portugal, Spain, Northern Italy, the Adriatic. Uh, they, they lived in Northern Israel at the Mount of, Mount, foot of Mount Hermon. Uh, they lived east of the Black Sea. They lived east of the Caspian Sea. They lived out into central Siberia. Uh, the most recent finds going out to a town that I have myself taught in twice, Chita, uh, which means that the Neanderthals went almost all the way from the Atlantic to almost the Pacific. Um, and we have recovered DNA from a tooth and from a finger bone. And they is us. Um, Neanderthals only vary from humans by about three tenths of 1%. Um, it's kind of funny with these genealogical DNA things that people can buy. I recommend against it personally, but that's because you end up selling yourself to some corporation. Right. Um, but aside from that, uh, they all say, well, we all have some DNA, DNA in us. You know? And that's true because they is us. Um, they, they had language, art, music. Uh, they uh, were religious. Uh, they buried dead in religious graves. They made jewelry. Um, they, they were hunter gatherers, as many people try to make them. They were not knuckle draggers. Um, however, uh, since 2015, we have found out that they made a very sophisticated uh, adhesive, which was a big technological advancement. Uh, we know that they farmed. They were not just hunter-gatherers, but we found out that they farmed. Uh, more recently, we found out that they didn't just live in caves. They also made houses. They did everything a normal human being does. And the variation between Neanderthals and people is less than the variation between people and people. Wow, that's amazing. Because it makes me think about how 100 years ago, as you know, Dr. Grady, you've spoken on this, they depicted Neanderthal as this half ape, half human, brutish kind of creature. And now they're, we know they're a very sophisticated people group, as you're pointing out. So you had a good section on Neanderthal. And how a hundred years ago they were depicted as some half ape, half man, brutish type of creature. But now today, especially based on the genetic data, you showed a picture of what a Neanderthal child would look like and looks fully human. If you saw a Neanderthal child walking down the street dressed in modern day clothes, you would, you would think that that's a human right there. Right. So the question is, Jerry, I've got it up on the screen. What are your thoughts on those that argue Neanderthals? And so there's many evolutionists, but also some old earth creationists that would argue Neanderthals are not fully human. And they base this on their genetics because Neanderthals have some genetic markers that we as modern humans don't have. And modern humans have some genetic markers that Neanderthals don't have. And then also their morphological differences, like in the skull and the occipital bun. So they would argue that Neanderthals are actually not human. What would be a good response? To yeah, that? well, that would be pretty racist and sexist and a few other things to make that claim today because it's widely accepted. In fact, this was accepted something like 30 and 40 years ago. But since then, almost every other month or twice a year, articles come out showing that Neanderthals practice music, they made musical instruments, they were, instruments work quite well, and you can use them today, you clean them up, and so on, and their artwork is in many ways excellent, and so they, they bur buried their, their dead, and among the burial, we find evidence of flowers, so there are so many, many areas that we find Neanderthals were in so many ways like we are, but on the other hand, there are people today, and of course, a good example is the Austrian Aborigines, which we used to claim we're not fully human because indeed they have traits which are not that close to you and I. If you find the skull of an aborigine, you find there are differences. So what I conclude is, and this is generally concluded today, 
is that these are people who had different traits. They're simply people differences. Of course, creationist stress, we're all descendants of Adam and Eve, and therefore we're all related. Our, our fathers, mothers, go all the way back to Adam and Eve, and therefore we're all genetically related. But that doesn't mean there's no differences. There are differences, of course, between uh, racial groups, between, uh, again, we don't like to use the term racial because there's only one race, the human race, but there are differences between uh, different groups and these differences produce people groups. And therefore, uh, uh, there are morphological differences, but of course, that's just, you know, human trade differences. And uh, every now and then I have, find, I find a, a person who looks just like a Neanderthal. And I hate to say this, but I was in church one day and this guy that sat behind me, boy, he was a perfect Neanderthal. And I mentioned to my wife, oh, I'd love to get a picture of him. And she said, don't, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. <clears throat> and when I was teaching, there was a professor at Bowling Green State University that just looked, I mean, he just perfect Neanderthal. And I mentioned this in anthropology class later. And one of the students, her father was a professor at Bowling Green. And when I mentioned this, she said, oh, yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah, he just, he's a perfect Neanderthal. But as far as we know, his German background, and he just has these traits. And uh, nobody knew, knows whether or not he, you know, is he related to Neanderthals? Well, physically, he looks like one. But on the other hand, I understand in both these cases, their family traits go back to three or 400 years from Germany. So, uh End of story. Great points. I mean, we could point to, and you have pointed to in previous presentations here, to uh, actors, boxers. There's one specific Russian boxer, Nikolai, I think his name is, where they have that distinct Neanderthal trait in, in the brow, the brow ridge. So modern day people have Neanderthal traits. Yeah, the genetics, I have a question whether or not, assuming they are as old as evolutionists say they are, I have a question whether or not these comparisons are valid because when I taught forensics we had cases where someone died in like 1942 and we had you know, how do you determine who they are they did genetic analysis and the courts over and over says you cannot do genetic analysis with someone who died in 1942 you know when they died so assuming it's that same person it's not valid because you're going to have a lot of distortion cosmic radiation and so on genetic chains are quite le quite uh, easy to break and therefore I'm not aware of every court case but a number of court cases say you cannot it's not valid to compare somebody who died in 1942 and try to determine who they were and make comparisons with these people and people today and so therefore I'm skeptical of if 1942 is a problem what about you know Neanderthal are 5,000 years old I have a right. problem with that or 500,000 years old like the evolutionary model would would propose and so how how would we find intact dna if that were the case i i sometimes wonder if the evolutionary model is true and neanderthals and homo sapiens were separated and isolated from each other for hundreds of thousands of years and then homo sapiens came out of africa met with groups like Neanderthals, Denisovans, how were they able to interbreed? How were they fertile? If they were separated for so long, you'd, you'd think that there'd be enough genetic change there where they're not interfertile. And correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Bergman, we have their genes. A great population of, of humans today have Neanderthal genetics. Right. And that includes me. When I had 23andMe do a genetic analysis, they found I had a fairly high number of Neanderthal genes. And when I talk to others, I find it's not uncommon. And that could well be because I'm, my background is Germany. And so Neanderthals lived in Germany. And so mm -hmm. therefore, I probably am related to off the Neanderthal uh, persons. You know, back a great, 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 great grandfather was likely a Neanderthal who interbred with, uh, with others. So were Neanderthals post flood? I would say, yeah, they would be. Although it's, you know, when you find 
bones could well be pre-flood. Died that in the pre-flood, but I'm not sure if people have we have looked into that in very much detail. I don't know. Would the ones that are found in caves, would that be an indication that maybe they're post-flood? If we would argue caves were formed from the flood or after the flood? Yeah, that of course would argue for post-flood. That's true. It would. But it's not. Some are found in caves, but of course others are found buried. So right. And I, so if they're closer to the flood, if we did, for sake of argument, let's say we did have reliable genetics, would we expect them, therefore, different genetics than extant humans today? I mean, if they were closer to the flood, that's going back thousands of years ago, we'd expect as creationists some differences in, in the genetics. Is that right, Dr. Oh, Bergman? yes, yeah. That's the, what you look at when you do genetic analysis, you look for, in fact, there are so many differences generally when they do work in the forensics generally you don't look at all those differences because there are too many you can't evaluate so generally when they do genetic comparison they look at very specific genes very specific fragments and they're able to find enough differences in those small fragments to make the determination without having to sequence the whole genome although now of course they could do that pretty inexpensively but in forensics you're basically look, looking at a fairly small selection of genes which are kind of uh the the ones especially that vary a lot, of course, and ones that's easy to do, easy to sequence. I've read a number of papers, at least recently, Dr. Bergman, that suggest Neanderthals were very isolated, existed in small tribes, and as a result, they were incredibly inbred. And so a lot of those recessive mutations came to the forefront and led to rapid genetic degeneration. Do I you think, think some of the, go yeah, ahead, you can speak for that. Okay. that. That's likely what happened. Would it that was, therefore then explain if if the, the DNA is reliable, that could also explain why there are some significant differences if Neanderthals really were this widespread in their inbreeding? I agree. I that's one good hypothesis we're coming out with more and more information about neanderthals so yeah expect some of these questions to be answered in the future do you think some of these neanderthals were examples of humans maybe even immediately post-flood that lived hundreds of years old could be yeah and it could be the distortions we see is a result of longevity right i i wonder what you would think then if we have humans post flood like Neanderthals living two, three, maybe 400 years, would that mean they're also accumulating more mutations and therefore pass on more mutations than say we would today if we only lived to 70 or 80? Yeah, that could be, yeah. Well, there's a lot of interesting hypotheses we could uh, discuss with Neanderthals. So you made some great points and you pointed out how they bury their dead. They are sophisticated people. If they're burying their dead, would that not speak to spirituality and religion? Right. Afterlife, yeah. And flowers were added to the grave quite consistently, wow. as well as other things. So the flowers, you can do analysis of what's left of them and determine, I guess, you could probably do genetic analysis and determine what kind of flowers they were. Yeah, that's a real challenge to many in the old earth creation camp that argue Neanderthals were just beasts and not human. I, that's a major challenge to them. Yeah, it is.